Strecker synthesis, Gabriel synthesis. These almost sound like mythological reactions instead of organic syntheses named after scientists. But in this video, we're going to remove the myth, walk you through exactly what you need to know about both Strecker and Gabriel syntheses so that you can get these questions correct on your MCAT. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, what do these reactions do? Both Strecker synthesis and Gabriel synthesis make amino acids. That's why they're so important and relevant for the MCAT, because amino acids are such important molecules. That also means that if your passage or question stem is not about making amino acids, don't pick Strecker synthesis or Gabriel synthesis as your answer. Our second interesting point about these reactions is they don't actually occur biologically. We're not seeing Strecker synthesis and Gabriel synthesis in our cells. Instead, we use them in a lab to make amino acids as our foundational material for proteins. As humans, we have to consume our amino acids through our diet. That's why they're called the 20 essential amino acids. And we can, of course, manipulate and change those amino acids through keto acid reactions in metabolism. But we really can't make them from scratch like we can in a lab with Strecker and Gabriel synthesis. So that's another key point as you're reading passages if you're reading about organic syntheses of amino acids in the body, Gabriel and Strecker synthesis are probably not your answer. The third key thing to remember about Gabriel and Strecker syntheses are that they produce what's called racemic mixtures of amino acids. That means that we form both isomeric forms of our amino acids. In organic chemistry, we call this L or D amino acids. Now, in our bodies, we use exclusively L-amino acids. So if we're going to be using these amino acids to build proteins that are gonna go into humans, we gotta make sure that we isolate only the L form that's produced by Strecker or Gabriel syntheses. We can do this with a lab technique like affinity chromatography that can bind to only one isomeric form of each amino acid. Okay, we have the three key features that are similar for both Strecker and Gabriel syntheses. They both make amino acids, they do this usually in laboratory experiments and not in our body, and they produce racemic mixtures of amino acids. Now let's get into the key features of each reaction and what you need to know for test day. All right, we're gonna start with Strecker. Before I draw out this mechanism, I wanna emphasize, mechanisms are not tested on the MCAT. Instead, as I draw this out, I'm gonna point out key features that I do want you to remember. Things like reactants, products, and where we form either the L or D isomer. The Strecker synthesis starts with an aldehyde. An aldehyde has a double bonded carbon oxygen bond bound to a hydrogen here. So this is going to be our aldehyde component of the reaction. Note that I wrote an R group here. An R group means any group, but remember we're making amino acids. So this R group is going to be specific to the R group of the amino acid that we're making. For example, alanine has just a methyl, right? A CH3. So if we're making alanine, this R group would be CH3. So you can check out the specific amino acid you're making by looking at the R group of the aldehyde in the Strecker synthesis. Our next major piece of the Strecker puzzle is ammonium chloride, which I've drawn here. The important piece of this is the nitrogen atom, because of course all amino acids have an amino group, which contains nitrogen. So this ammonium chloride is going to be bringing in our nitrogen. It does this by replacing the oxygen on our aldehyde with itself, with the nitrogen. And that forms what's known as an imine, which is a double bonded nitrogen carbon bond. And then of course, we still have our R group pulled over here. So we now have the nitrogen, and, and this of course has brought over some of its hydrogens. So it's gonna be NH2 plus here, right? Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it's gonna have a plus. So we have our nitrogen, we have our amino group part of our amino acid, but we need one more piece, which is our carboxylic acid. And this is where our final reactant, our final important piece of the puzzle comes in, and that is known as cyanide. Specifically, the cyanide we use in Strecker synthesis is potassium cyanide, KCN. This will ionize in solution to become K plus and CN minus. The negative sign on the carbon, of course, makes it very reactive. Carbon desperately wants four bonds. So it's gonna go ahead and attack our imine here. I'll write that in, imine and form a new bond. So we can see here that the attack from the cyanide is going to bump our double bond off our imine, forming an amine here, 
That's one of our functional groups. And then we have our cyanide, which now has a much happier carbon because it has four bonds. This whole intermediate is called ammonio nitrile, right? After our nitrogen, uh, triple nitrogen carbon here, our cyanide. All right, so we're missing some oxygens, right? We're missing some oxygens, and we of course have an extra nitrogen here. So what we'll do to this final amino nitrile, we're going to add heat, and we're going to add acid, H3O plus specifically. This H3O plus is bringing our oxygens and is going to form our final product, which is of course our amino acid. Now to review key features, we start with an aldehyde. We then add an ammonia, right? Uh, usually ammonium chloride to bring in our amino group, our nitrogen for our amino group. We then add in potassium cyanide, which ionizes our major thing that we care about here is the cyanide anion. That cyanide is then going to attack the central carbon bond. Now the cyanide attack is our key step because it is our point of isomerization. This is where we're going to form either the L amino acid or the D amino acid form. And this is because this cyanide anion can attack our imine from either the back of the molecule, can slide in the back, or it can attack from the front. And whenever we can attack from either the front or the back, but we're producing a chiral molecule, we'll produce a racemic mixture, a mixture of both forms of the isomer. So that's the key step there, and it's the key step because it's our point of isomerization. Before we get into Gabriel synthesis, I'm Amanda Brem, and I've been coaching pre-meds on their MCAT journeys since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test-taking strategies, and mental fitness tips so that you can perform your best on testing. And if you'd like more interactive lessons like this one, including test day strategy and a personalized study plan, check out my next available MCAT cohort in the caption below. All right, so Strecker, not so bad. Let's get into the more complex Gabriel synthesis of amino acid. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps, but then we're gonna recap the important pieces that you'll need to know for test day. Gabriel synthesis starts off with a chunky reactant called potassium thalamide. Potassium thalamide, the second P is silent, looks like this. It's got a benzene ring, and then it's got a nitrogen bound next to two ketones here, making these amides, right? Because when we have a ketone bound right next to a nitrogen, we have an amide. So we've got this funky looking ring, and then it's bound to potassium, so it very quickly ionizes in solution. So the potassium will become K+, and the nitrogen will become N-. So just so you know, whenever we have group 1, uh, atoms like potassium, sodium, oftentimes we're just using that to then ionize in solution so that we get the anion we want to react with. So in this case, our anion is with the nitrogen. Our second reactant is equally chunky with a long name, and this one's called diethyl bromomalonate. Yep, got that right. <laughs> so key features here, we have two ester groups, right? Onate as a suffix means ester groups, right? And then they're both bound to ethyls, to carbons over here. And then we have our bromine, our bromine right here. Now, bromines, like all halogens, are really good leaving groups. They're excellent to put on a molecule so that it will leave and we can click on something else. We're going to be attacking with our nitrogen, which by being negatively charged and quite unhappy about being negatively charged, it's going to make an excellent nucleophile. Remember, nucleophiles are negatively charged or at least have a partial negative charge and they're not happy. They would like to please gain a bond so that they lose their negative charge. So what's gonna happen here is we're going to do what's called an SN2 substitution, where our nitrogen is gonna come and attack our carbon that's bonded to our bromine. This is going to result in the bromine leaving and being a good leaving group, allowing us to form a bond between the nitrogen and this carbon here. The resulting molecule is pretty darn big, but you'll notice it does not have an R group yet. So we have not yet formed our R group that's going to make our amino acid unique. We do have a nitrogen. We definitely have plenty of oxygens to make carboxylic acids with. But our next step is going to add in that R group with another SN2 substitution. In order to do this substitution, we're going to add in a base. It's going to be a base catalyzed reaction. We're going to add in our R group. I'll put that in red again. Bound to another halogen. This R group 
is going to attack the same carbon that our nitrogen attacked and replace the hydrogen here. So we'll end up with a molecule that looks like this, where we again have a carbon bound to four unique substituents with an R group, a nitrogen, and then of course it's bound to two different esters. So we have everything we need to make an amino acid. We have an R group, we have a nitrogen, and of course we have carboxylic acids. So now we just need to get rid of all of the extra stuff. The way we're gonna do this is through two reactions, hydrolysis, breaking with water, and decarboxylation, where we remove these excess carboxy groups. Let's walk through where each of these pieces of the amino acid came from. The rest of it was just cleaved off and is our excess product. So our amino group, which we'll do in blue, of course came from our nitrogen here, and the rest of this thalamide ring was cleaved off with hydrolysis, and the hydrogens came from that hydrolysis reaction as well. The interesting piece is the carboxylic acid, right? Because we have two fair game esters that could have made our carboxylic acid, and this is the key reaction I'll draw it again in yellow. This is the reaction in which we have isomerization because the carboxylic acid could have come either from the lower ester group or the upper. The reaction will pick one or the other to use. And so depending on which ester got cleaved and which one stays, we'll either get the L or D form. So throughout this reaction, as we make multiple amino acids, we're going to get a mixture of both the L and the D form depending on which of these two won and stayed with the amino acid. I'll pick this lower one for this example. So key features, the two major reactants of Gabriel synthesis are potassium thalamide and diethyl bromomalonate. They then go through a series of SN2 reactions and finish up with hydrolysis and decarboxylation to get rid of all this extra stuff. And the decarboxylation is what allows us to have a racemic mixture of the amino acids. Again, the exact mechanisms, electron pushing, will not be tested on the MCAT. We just want to focus on the key features for your prep. Let's do a quick recap with some dubonics to help us lock in the information in this video. We've got two syntheses that make amino acids, Strecker and Gabriel. The Strecker synthesis, I use Strecker is simple as my way of remembering what the reaction looks like. The Strecker synthesis has three very small reactants, an aldehyde, an ammonia, and a cyanide. All of these are just a few atoms each and they click together to make our amino acid. Gabriel, I like to think of like an angel with lots of wings and eyes, right? So it's got two chunky, big reactants that we use to make an amino acid, and then we have to cleave off all of the extra. Remember that in the Gabriel synthesis, racemic mixture comes from the decarboxy, where we get to choose which ester we're using. Strecker, it comes from whether or not the cyanide attacks from the top or the bottom. And that's Strecker and Gabriel Syntheses Simplified. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your pre-med community. As we all know, the MCAT can be challenging to go on your own, so sometimes we could use a little help. Thanks so much, happy studying, and I'll see you in the next video.